The sugar industry processes sugar cane and sugar wheat to manufacture edible sugar. More than 60% of the world's sugar production is from sugar cane, and the balance is from sugar wheat. Sugar manufacturing is a highly seasonal industry with season lengths of about 6 to 18 weeks for beets and 20 to 32 weeks for cane. Approximately 11% of the sugar cane can be processed to commercial sugar using about 20 cubic meters of water per metric ton of cane processed. Sugar cane contains about 70% water, 14% fiber, 10 to 15% sucrose, and 2.7% soluble impurities. Sugar cane is generally crushed and the juice is separated at meals from the fibrous residue known as bagas. The juice is clarified to remove mud and non-sugars, evaporated to prepare syrup, crystallized to separate out the liquor, and centrifuge to separate molasses from the crystals. Sugar crystals are then dried and packed. Cane with the maximum sucrose content is supplied to the factory by the help of tractor pulled trailers and lorries. For the factory to operate without stopping, there should be continuous supply of cane to the factory. The can delivered to the factory is weighed at the factory weigh bridge. It is used to measure the net weight of the can by double weighing the can trailers, that is, with and without load. Can weighing has two basic objectives for both can goers and can millers. These are the first one is to grow performance of agricultural cane fields, like weight of cane per hectare, weight of cane per variety, weight of cane per cut, and others. The second one is to know factory performance, like cane crushed per unit time of operation, and put out the balance of the factory and others. The carry weight information is delivered to both field and factory operation management. Temporary cane storage. To minimize the factory downtime, when there is insufficient supply of cane, some factories have a temporary storage area known as cane yard, where the cane will be stored for a maximum of 24 hours. The stored cane from the cane yard will be fed to the cane table using stackers. Since the cane deterioration starts immediately after cutting, cane transportation and temporary storage time on the field and cane yard should always be kept to a minimum. Deterioration is accelerated by high temperature, light, loss of moisture and inversion, all of which factors are greater under tropical conditions. Losses in quality caused by delay in grinding are far higher than any mechanical or chemical losses occurring later in the process. For instance, four days delay of cane can cause a weight loss of 11% through evaporation and a delay of 14 days generally causes a 48% loss of sugar in fresh cane. The first delay is in the field where the cane harvesters burn, cuts, piles it for collection and loading onto the cane carts. To minimize the delay time, a close cooperation between harvesting crew and factory management is essential.
The can is unloaded from the trailers by using either hydraulic can unloaders like Finca and Matara sugar factories or overhead traveling cranes like Nguenji and Shara sugar factories, which have two or more hooks on the horizontal circular pipe or bar that is suspended from the top pulley by steel ropes. The can is unloaded onto a can feed table from which the can is transferred to the slab type horizontal can carrier. The can coming from the field is unloaded from the trailers on the can table with the type of chains that have sharp thin projections to ensure the motion of the can on the table. The can moving up on the table by the help of thin projections will also be unloaded onto the can carrier. It's also here that the can washing takes place. Some feed tables are fitted with a tumbler or leveler, which is horizontal hollow shaft placed above the axis of the front drum of the table and which rotates slowly in the reverse direction to the motion of the cane on the table. That's provided with arms arranged in a helix along its length, which ensure that the cane falls onto the cane carrier in small loads avoiding a heavy fall of large masses which would be liable to provoke chokes at the knives. To remove dirt, trash, and especially sand coming with the cane from the field, which is responsible for the rapid wearing of preparation and milling equipment. Some factories like Finja Sugar Factory use pressurized water by the help of nozzles arranged at the bottom side of the horizontal pipes laying parallel to each other above the cane table. The cane coming up from the cane table will be transferred to an overlapping slot type conveyor called cane carrier. It comprises of horizontal and inclined lanes. It's in line with the mills. Usually it has a width similar to the mills. It's also on here that the cane preparation process takes place. The can being transferred from the can table to the overlapping slot type horizontal can carrier is transferred to the station where can preparation takes place. Can preparation starts with cutting the can stalks into pieces which will further be treated in a second knife set. The purpose of this stage is to export the cells of the can stalk for juice extraction to increase capacity by increasing bulk density of the feed and to render the juice more readily available for the action of imbibition by breaking and opening cane cells. The axis of shaft of each knife set is parallel to the cane carrier slots and consists of a number of braids arranged at 60 degrees to each other. The tips of blades have minimum possible clearance from the can carrier slot so that the can passing beneath it will be cut. The material reaching the first mill is then in the form of coarse fibrous blanket which is in a prepared condition for the juice to be more readily separated.
The preparatory treatment doesn't remove any juice, but the crushers extract some juice from the cane end. The bagus, that is the first byproduct, is released to the forest mill. The sugar content of cane is dissolved, and juice contains in millions of plant cells. Efficiency is one method of juice extraction and the process is based on osmosis. In the case of cane sugar, where there is a solution of sucrose contained in the cell membrane surrounded by a solution of lower concentration, sucrose passes through the membrane to the weaker solution. In the sugar factory, diffusion can be defined are the phenomenon by which the cells of the cane immersed in water or a solution of lower concentration than the juice which they contain gives up to that water or to that solution a part or all of the sugar forming the excess of concentration of their juices. Theoretically, the sucrose extraction of a diffuser can be nearly 100%. Retention time must be long enough to allow cell membranes to rupture as a result of surrounding hot juice of low density. Osmosis alone accounts for only a small percentage of extraction. To minimize risk of long retention and inversion, milk of lime is added in a diffuser to increase the pH to about 6. Higher sucrose extraction in the diffuser also means higher extraction of impurities. This reduces recovery in the boiling house later on. The only bagas diffuser in Ethiopian sugar industry is found at Matahara Sugar Factory, which is usually located next to the forest three roller mill. This bagas leaving the diffuser is transferred to the subsequent mills for further extraction and dewatering. The juice extraction is also done by the three roller mills consisting of cold and a feed roll on each mill. The three horizontal rollers are arranged in a triangular form the standard milling unit for the industry. Some mills are type of three roller mill fitted with an underfeed roll and a two roller pressure feeder with an underfeed roller. The purpose of this pressure feeder is to increase the bulk density of the bagas so that it will assist the extraction of the process. Normally, the top roller is driven by steam turbine or electric motor through reduction gearing and the two lower rollers by pinions meshing with pinion mounted on the top roller. Thus, the top roller drives the other two. Most mills in Ethiopian sugar factories are driven by steam turbines coupled with intermediate gearboxes that are used to reduce the speed and multiply torque. However, in some factories, the mills are also driven by the help of electric motors. Dry crushing in any succeeding mills will not give an appreciable increase in extraction or in fiber content of bagasse. Hence, to achieve any further extraction, it's necessary to dilute the residual juice in the bagas before further crushing. Such dilution is done in several states so that the juice remaining in the final bagas is much more dilute than the original juice in the can. This procedure is known as imbibition. With dry crushing, the limit of extraction is 
soon reached after the first meal, the fiber content of bagas would be about 30%. The bagas leaving the succeeding meals would have fiber content of the order of 38, 45, and 50% from the second, third, and fourth meals respectively. The bagas leaving the preceding meal goes to the next meal by the help of rake type or fork type intermediate bagas carriers. Sometimes it's also possible to use belt conveyors. They are inclined structures with dragging bars attached on the chain that is driven by electric motors. The inclination has great importance to increase or to improve the extraction efficiency of meals by increasing bulk density of the bagas. The juice leaving each meal is temporarily stored in the respective tanks from here it is continuously pumped back to the next meal as in pipition to one another. The final mixed juice which contains fine bagas with it will be screened by DSM3 to make it free of bagas and pump it to the station where it is measured by using juice balance. Similarly, the bagas coming out of the last meal is transported to the boiler plant as a fuel. The whole milling process can be controlled by mill operator at a specific place where every push button and control gauge are located on a single ball. The milling rate can be adjusted according to the operating condition of the factory. If the roller surface is smooth or shiny, the bagas coming in between the rollers will not be gripped properly and as a result the bagas will be developed in the chute. This might be finally called mill choke. To avoid such milling disturbances and improve cane grinding, it is essential to maintain the roller surface roughness. Usually top and deliver rollers are arched while 